Hello YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little about Gripworks and uh, their new pipe plane that's quite fun. Foam profile. Has an extreme amount of throw on it. Give you a bit of an idea there on the end. And your rudder throw. A lot of fun. Cheap airplane. All it requires is a battery. And a speed, I mean a uh, receiver. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go through and show you what comes in the kit. Uh, it'll be my second one. I've uh, let friends fly this, beat it to death, slam it in the ground. Um, <laughs> and it's just a blast to fly. And it's easy to repair if anything comes off. Uh, there's no real hinges. The hinges are made by use of a glue. Um, carbon fiber rods are included to go from your servos back. As a matter of fact, everything is included, like I said, in the kit. The only thing that's not included is a battery and a receiver. Batteries I've been using are 11S 550 Hyperions. And uh, let's get going see what it takes to put her together. Very few tools are needed to put this together. I use some wax paper to lay that out so she doesn't stick to the table. I have welder's glue. It's actually a contact cement. I hear uh, you can get this at Lowe's, but uh, Lowe's uh, apparently isn't going to be carrying this anymore from the rumor I've heard. If you can get it, it's great stuff. 1.5 millimeter. Uh, Allen style for the motor. Uh, some motors come with Phillips screws. You need a Phillips screwdriver, either case. A razor knife. Some way to measure. Uh, marking pin. And a couple of things to hold at 90 degree angles. And a nice flat building surface. As far as what comes in the kit, oh, and Velcro. Slide this over here and show you what comes in the kit for this aircraft. So we'll start off with some of the fuselage parts for the parts that come in the kit. Kit comes boxed well. Ain't really much you can do to damage this. So the packing we put in there uh, works just fine. Kit comes, this is the second one I've got without any damage whatsoever. You have your main fuselage plate. This is the lower wing section. Put the servo cut out in it for it. One side of the fuselage. They do beautiful paint jobs on this. Rudder. Actually, the rudder should come installed, but this one came off in shipping, but a little glue. It takes a second. And then we have the lower part of the fuselage. Here's the upper wing. Once again, uh, they do beautiful paintwork. They look great. Horizontal stabilizer. And then you get your parts. This off over here. Here's your push rods. Push rods supports. Uh, you get two with the elevator, one for the rudder. Your aileron supports or aileron control rods. And then you also get a nice bit of a one millimeter carbon fiber rod for further fuselage support 
and these are all carbon fiber rod with just the metal Z bends on the end and straight on the other in the parts bag. Open this up here. And the two supports for the wing. You'll notice there's carbon fiber rods implanted into here for support, as well as control surfaces have a carbon fiber rod installed for support. The wing has one long rod to support it, and same with the lower wing. A nice long carbon fiber rod. The way they paint these are highly visible in the air. You can fly them in low light conditions without a problem. Uh, the other parts you'll get, this is the lower skid, goes underneath the uh, fuselage to help support, to help when it lands, so you're not just sliding on the belly of it. The rear of it has a little notch or a little uh, dimple on it, so it can help when landing. Comes with four stall fences. And you have all your servo horns, which are simple to install. Drop a glue, and uh, I'll zoom in on this as I build it. But uh, and they just slide right into place. A lot of the places where control horns need to go are all marked. Your upper aileron or lower aileron mounts control horns with the extensions on them. and some more control horns. An electronics bag. Like I said, you get everything you need in this except for a battery and a receiver. You have there's your three servos. Servo horns are already installed with the locks on them. Uh, if I get my glasses out, Hextronic HXK 900, it's a 9 gram servo for the aileron, uh, 5 gram servo, and another 5 gram servo for your uh, elevator and rudder. But uh, I feel like I said, many flights on this other one, not a problem. Also get a pre-wired 1300 kV motor, and it comes with uh, speed control. This is a 12 amp saker, and even a prop saver comes with it. With an O-ring, I didn't get my pull my O-rings out. I already put them away, but there's two O-rings that go over the propeller, and then they also include a prop which slides over that, the o-ring pops over it, that way you don't break your prop every time you smack the ground. Because trust me, with this airplane and the maneuvers you'll be doing, you'll be smacking the ground. Now well, one thing you can do that I didn't mention before, is the motor mount you can order uh, installed or not installed. When he puts these together, he has uh, uh, no right thrust put in it whatsoever. On um, this aircraft, don't really know how much difference it's going to make. Uh, I had him send it to me uninstalled, glued it in myself. I'm trying a little bit of right thrust in this one, see if it flies any different than the, the original one I got. But all you do is you lay that out on a flat surface. Now, the white is the bottom, painted side is the top. Of course, your upper fuselage half. You'll want to test fit it because it has these supports, these wooden supports in it, right through here. Now, let's see how this fits in here. 
make sure everything test fits good. If not, do a little trimming. That fits well. That fits well. Looks like I'm, you know, that's fitting perfect. That's these two are the cutouts. Two cutouts here for your servos to lay on. And then the bottom piece will just go on there. Two holes for it. Snaps right in. Snaps right in. back of it. And that would basically be the fuselage assembly. And we'll put a little glue on this. Get this set up. This is where the uh, 90 degree items come into place. This tail section actually extends further for mounting of the horizontal. We'll pop this out, flip this over, install the bottom section first. Once again, test that everything, everything lines up in the little grooves. couple of 90 degree angles that I have here. Set those in place. And line it all up. Now I'll pop it apart, apply some glue to it, slide it back together, and uh, this glue sets up in like five minutes at the most. Flip it over, do the other side. And I put these two pieces here to support the center section. Got the bottom on. I'm going to put the horizontal stabilizer on. Add a little bit of glue down this line. And on the tail section. Put a couple pieces of tape on here. A little glue here, here, on the tops of these this time. We'll run our glue section down all the way. And we're going to glue the top of these this time to match. And remember, these are your servo holes. You don't want any glue in those. A little glue here, servo hole, skip it. All the way down to here, to the top of this one, and go all the way to the front of the aircraft. So, we'll put our horizontal in place. By sliding it in, setting that down. section of this fuselage in place. Start here in the back and work our way forward. Put that one in. That one in. Slide that mount in and line up our motor. This tape here together to hold these straight when it dries, and we'll glue this section here a little bit later. I'm gonna put my 90s up. Everything's aligned. It also helps to straighten your fuselage with those 90 degrees. And put a little pressure down on it. And now we'll let that set up and dry.
one thing you'll happen to notice on this aircraft. If you look at the rudder, this is a little black dot. Uh, same with the horizontal or the elevator. Another black dot. This is where your control horns go. Bottom of your wings. It puts a black dot there for you. So that's where all your control horns will mount. They're already laid out for you. And on the top of this wing, the lower wing, we have some black dots. So, set these out to the side. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to fix that wobbly area. Put a little glue in there, a little contact seam out. Like I said, and uh, well, if I didn't say it before, you don't have to be real perfect putting this airplane together. One of the nice things about it, it is made to be flexible. So any mistakes you make can be straightened out in the end. Also, the same with repairs. Now I know with contact cement, you usually put it on, you let it dry, and then uh, put the two pieces together. But I just get it slap her, slap her on, clean up the excess with my finger, slide the pieces together. And now I'll take this, move this forward to this foam. Use this back. Hold that nice and straight. Put it on the other side, actually. Yeah, wiggle it just a little to make sure I get good adhesion. Straighten it out. Set this off to the side and let that set for a second. Well, while that's setting up. I'm going to go ahead and start installing some servo horns. Uh, gives you an idea of what they are. They are quite simple. Take an at a drop to the tip. Just a little bit to the plate, smear it around. And then you go to your dot. Push on the elevator right here. Line it up the dot and just push it into place. Simple as that. With the rudder, same thing. You want to make it a little bit easier. Find your dot, work the hole. There we go. Pop it out. Add our glue. And put our rudder in place. Press it down. And these servo horns, as is all of them, point forward. I don't know if you'll notice in the kit, you got two special horns. These go on the lower wing in the very back. So we grab our lower wing. You'll see the two dots in the back and the two dots in the front. These ones in the front, I put it a bit of an angle so that they're angled with the servo. And we'll go ahead and install those. And on these servo horns, I do use a fair amount of glue. When I'm doing the ailerons, I like to try to line them up, any, even the piece of uh, the skid out of here. Set it on there and line it up so it's pointing 
about halfway at the hole here for the servo. It's a little bit more thorough with that much of a bind. I'll press these down. Make sure we're all getting a nice good seat. And then the special ones, the ones I was telling you about, with the metal on them. Now you want your screws facing outward. That way you can get to them to adjust them. And on these, for some reason he's got them facing inward, which kind of makes it a little difficult. I'll check this with the upper wing, so what kind of geometry I got. We'll leave them alone and just glue them in place. All in, all in all, this kit is very easy to put together, very quick to put together. You can have this to yeah, you can have this put together in a night, in an hour or two. One thing I like about them, I can, it's one of the faster arfs to assemble. And these rear ones go on straight. That's how I've set up my servo horns for the lower ailerons. This servo they give you is supposed to mount in your lower fuselage up top here. You see where the cutouts are for it to slide in there and there. But when you put the lower wing on servo fits in that hole and there. I didn't like the geometry but here between here and there made it set a little bit too low. Also if it ever had time I have to change the servo out it was going to be a pain in the butt. Um, not really a lot of room up here. I have to cut out some slices out try to push the servo out. And it's going to break this up. So on mine, my first one anyways, what I did is I actually mounted the servo to the wing and then I made the skid so it could protect the bottom of that servo. But it also left the geometry between the servo and the servo horn pretty darn flat. So it's your choice there on what you want to do. You can mount it down low on the wing like I did, or up higher. And the last two servo horns, of course, go in the upper wing. With the two dots on the back. There and there. And with all my other aircraft, I do this. Really nice to have one of these little servo testers. They're absolute, absolutely invaluable. And a little four cell pack. And we'll plug this in. Power it up. And plug our servos in. Let's see. There we go. And even though the manufacturer at Griff works means well, there's always the chance of a defective servo. And that one moves okay. Now this wheel unit will test three. And I prefer to check the one at a time just so I can keep my eye on it. And just full adjust and center. I tend to mount my servo down so 
I'll take a razor knife. Do a little modification here. That is, I'll take this little ear where the servo usually mounts. Trim it off. mounting the servo, I just take a dab of glue and put it across the bottom here, on both sides. I'll slide the water through the hole here in the bottom of the wing. Just as simple as that. So for access to these Phillips head screws, even though the servo horn is off just a hair, just go underneath them with a Phillips screwdriver and just twist it until I get a hole all the way through. That way when I go to install the rods, I can reach up from the bottom and get to my control horns. And tighten them up. And what you'll notice is once this side here is fairly fat and the bottom is a little thinner, pointier, this fat portion goes towards the top point. And you can tell that from the off cut. That is not a centered cut. That one's centered. Same with your upper wing. You can tell that it's uh, not centered, that bar, that uh, carbon fiber bar. Forgive me, it's getting a little late. I started on this project way too late this evening. But that fits good. Or fits quite well, I should say. And then I also lean forward. And the bottom fits well. Okay, we'll go ahead and install the lower control arms for our uh, lower wing control arms to the servo. You'll notice they gave you two different sizes, a long one and a short one. Short ones go in to the lower control arm or lower wing aileron. And to the servo. The long ones will go to the back. And now we're going to fit the fuselage to the lower wing. The little thing about the lower wing pull the servo horn off, put the rods in, trim the excess. When you go to put these on for this wing leveling, don't depend on the wing tip. You need to look down it all the way to the servo horn on both sides and level the servo horn and then tighten up your lock and screws. If you try looking at the wing tip, remember this is a extremely pliable aircraft. And that's one thing that makes it so fun is that due to the pliability and twisting when you're doing maneuvers it just it'll go crazy. It'll do stuff that I've never seen before. But uh, so to line these up, like I said, look at the horn relative to the servo. And then, hopefully that didn't get tightened up. And then uh, tighten these up. Uh, when you tighten these screws, you don't have to crank them down really tight. You have to snug them up good. This one I didn't get quite good enough. But uh, still yet, don't over tighten them. They're small screws, they'll strip out on you. The only thing I'm not going to do is put glue once again on the bottom of this piece. So I'm going to take and uh, actually put the glue on here and then put a little glue on these edges and we'll assemble this lower wing. So 
So I'll put a little down the center between the servo and the center. In this little gap. And in this little gap. Spread that around a little bit. Put a little more bite here on the sides. And then a fuselage. Put a little on the back here. In the corners. And on the side of this. And on the very tip right here. No way it gets on the airplane, but it doesn't lock my servo in place. Uh, while we're letting that set up, take a little cement, put on the bottom of these wing struts. I'm not going to put any on the bottom, just down through here, and a little on each side. And remember that the Ooh, dropped my cap. Larger end goes towards the top, smaller end goes towards the bottom, and they face forward. I'll slide this into place here. And while we're here, we'll also install the stall fences. Now, usually on his wings, there's a black mark. This one I got did not have the black mark. And in case yours does not either, I'll take a quick measurement from this aircraft. So, 2.8 inches in from the bottom of the section. And that's where your skull fences will go, top and bottom wing. Now on these stall fences, I've actually got mine set up, let's see, you'll notice these are cut, kind of rounded here and taller on the top. I put the rounder edge on the bottom, taller edge on top, and glue those into place. And you'll want to make sure those are fairly straight. Okay, I've got the stall fences installed, supports. I've also put the servos in. You notice that these servos, the rudder one, faces forward. It goes back. And the elevator, elevator also faces towards the forward part of the aircraft. And then goes back. Next step is to test fit the upper wing. I've already done that, fits nice, so now we're going to go ahead and glue that on. And I'm just going to put a glue here, glue in the support, and on the front. And also here on the sides. And for right now, I'm just going to glue on the center. And then after that sets for a little bit, I'll glue in the tips. Okay, we've got the uprights glued in and the wing glued on. This very top little piece here for this upright support. The only thing I had to do after I put the glue on was take a screwdriver here and move this one aft tang. You gotta wiggle that in to get it in place. And then check to make sure you have a good seal all the way across the bottom of it. Next thing we're gonna do, which I've already started on, is installing these linkages between the servo and the control surfaces in the back. You'll notice that one wire, one control rod has one support, one control rod has two supports. And it's also longer. This is for your rudder. This is for your elevator. And what I did is I measured the distance between the two. 
came to the elevator, servo horn to the servo, measured the halfway point, put a mark. I'll take a razor knife, cut a slot, slide that into the slot. Then the excess sticking out the other side, I'll snip off with a pair of uh, small cutters like these. Uh, another thing you'll need to do is the wiring for the uh, elevator. You'll need to cut a small slot, bring it through so that you can pull it from the other side like that. Now uh, you can mount your receiver on either side. I'm mounting mine on the right, on the left-hand side. If you wanted it on the right. And you just cut a slot on the side for the servo wire to come through. Okay, as we know, this rudder when it arrived was not connected, so we're going to make a hinge for it. Apply a piece of tape and put a razor blade in here. And I'm just going to take a small amount of this glue, put it on my finger, and just slightly. Dab it onto the air. Just slide it down it. And just kind of rub it in there. It'll take a little bit more. Just a small dollop. Man, this is going to be hard to get down by the elevator. Knocked it off. Well, it's just a little big deal. I'll just line it back up here. Go down here towards the bottom. And I realign my top. Now it just says set and dry. And once that dries in those spots, I'll be able to take off this and this. Uh, or this razor blade and tape and run a nice bead all the way down it and that'll fix that and then I'll start running these on these supports well we've installed the elevator I've done the same with the rudder the way I do this is I cut just as I measure this out I cut my slots slide these in add a little glue to each side of the wood, slide it in, look down it, make sure it looks, move these until it looks straight, and then hold it up, look down, make sure it's straight that way. And I've centered all my servos, tightened up all my, my uh, connectors here for the uh, linkage. Next thing I'm going to be doing is taking these one millimeter carbons that we have here, these little tiny rods that he comes with. And I'm going to cut these into four and a half inch links and place them along the fuselage. There should be, on this one I have a dot over here which will go up here to the vertical from the horizontal. And then this side, I can't see the dot probably because of the black paint that's over it, but I will measure it, match it, come up. Now when you match these in the fuselage, you don't want them touching each other. They've got to be slightly off or they'll just bind. Uh, so one will be setting a little bit further forward. And then we'll do the stringers down the fuselage. What that'll do is that'll get rid of all this twisting. It'll strengthen that up. I'll get all the dots laid out get the parts cut. The other thing I do is I cut them with a Dremel and I cut them at an angle at four and a half inches. Gives them kind of a point. I'll add glue to each tip and I'll line it up, slide this one in further than it needs to be and then slide it down into the other hole and then kind of center it up. But we'll get to that here in a second that I cut that were four and a half inches long I'll go in the bottom section the one on the top here 
I cut it five and a quarter for this upper support. Give it a little more strength going up and down. So the easiest way I found to do these to put them in nice is before you put any glue on them, put them in place. After you get them put into place, lined up the way you want. It just takes a small dab of glue. And when you push these in, they'll actually go in further each way. I'll slide this one back. Put just a tiny bit of glue on it. Put it back up to its hole. And just twist it a little. And slide it right back in. And as I slide it in, the bottom one comes out. Just a tiny droplet of glue on it. Because this aircraft does not take a lot of glue to put together. And then I slide this one back in its hole. And if there's any gobs, I'll just kind of smooth them out with my finger. And I'll do that with the following ones. Okay. We now have all the supports in place. And secured, which takes out a lot of the twisting in the fuselage. Now where I've mounted my servo through, because I like the geometry better with the servo down here, once again, forgive the poor lighting. I have to take the bottom skid plate that comes with it, and I've notched it to fit that. Now if you go with the stock servo mounting, you won't have to notch that out. But I'll glue that on, and then the uh, next thing to do would be to install the motor, speed control, and receiver. Well, everything's set up and dried. Skid's on. Supports are on, getting ready to install the motor and speed control. The one thing I like to do with all my speed controls is the plastic. If you look at the unit, you'll see on the bottom of the board, there'll be little bumps. And those little bumps are the electronics. The flat spot on the top is a heat sink. I usually cut as much of that away as I can to expose that heat seat to air. And now we're going to slide the motor in the front of the aircraft. I've loosened up the set screw. And it just takes a little wiggling. And sometimes it actually takes a little bit of a regular screwdriver to Pry that open. Pull again. This uh, piece of wiring here should be in this gap. Same with on the motor, you have your tie in. I usually pull it back a little bit so it fits in the other gap on the other side. And the manufacturers were kind enough to already supply the Velcro. Pull off this Velcro tape here, and you just I set this on this flat piece right here. I like leaving the wires twisted, eliminates noise, and I'll bring that straight back to the center of the airplane and just set that right there. The pillar comes with uh, they're eight inches. I'm not exactly sure of the pitch. I think they're about eight four. They're a real light duty propeller. Uh, the 1300s seem to work well with them. I've tried the 1500 motors and they're not as good. I, I really don't, I get more power out of these 13s than I do out of the 15s and the props they supply. And I've got this here set up with the cone portion of it facing outward. And if you never put one of these on with a prop saver o-ring, easiest way I found, put your propeller in place. After you balance the propeller, I start one end, bring it around, then grab my 
Phillips screwdriver. Slide it through here. Still, even with the screwdriver, it's sometimes a pain in the butt. But the screwdriver will usually catch in the head of the Phillips screw. So now we've got the engine mount, propeller mount. I've ran the servo wire up, cut a small hole here, through here, and mounted the receiver on the tower. The rest of the wiring, you can see I've bundled up here the speed control. Uh, throttle control goes comes up through a hole in the bottom and in and then there's another hole I've cut that goes to the other side of the aircraft to plug in for the battery pack now your velcro for your battery you'll want to get cut a, a nice long piece and that's because you'll be moving this battery pack forward and aft forward for more stable flight. The further you move it aft, the better it is for hovering and doing uh, uh, vertical maneuvers. Uh, from there, she is ready to go. All thing left to do is to range test it and to uh, put it through its initial flight. One nice thing about this design is on the bottom you have wing skids, main belly skid, another wing skid, and in the back you also have the tail skid. And I'll get a video of this in flight. But like I said, in one evening goes together. They're simple kits, they're fun to fly, and uh, customer service is great with, with uh, Griffworks. Like I said, Get you one, go play, let your friend fly it. They can bang it in the ground. All you need is a clear, uh, some clear contact cement, either welders or any actual clear contact cement will work. The other tip I can give you is this type of, type of foam here. This packing foam works well for any modifications you want to do to it. Um, Test your uh, contact semen on any foam before you try to apply it to the plane. I found some foams it'll eat right through and some it works perfect on. This is some good stuff here. And uh, next video about B will be the uh, flight of her.